He was bribing, essentially, and he was charged with bribing. He was bribing doctors, and there was a quota, and he was basically telling them if you prescribe more of our product, which was fentanyl, uh, the, the spray fentanyl called substance. If you prescribe more, we will give you more money. And he, they, they were, he was paying them out and take, taking them on trips, luxurious trips around the world and telling them not only to prescribe this medication to people who have headaches and back pain, mm. and the, the, a medication that is made and FDA approved only for breakthrough cancer patients. But yet you go to the doctor and you say you have a headache and this guy knows that he can get a kickback from the company and so, oh, you should take this this drug. How uh, much of a fentanyl. kickback was it? Oh, uh, it was significant. It was in the thousands of dollars. Some doctors got hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. And so they were incentivized. Yeah, there was a big incentive to do it. Yeah, and they were also invited to these luxury vacations yes. and to go to speaking fees. What they said is that they were paying them for speaking fees, which basically was the code. Bribes. Yeah. I have a good friend who used to be a pharmaceutical representative, and he explained to me how it works that he would not just know the doctor, but he got to know, he knew who the doctor's kids' names mm -hmm. were. He would show up at their baseball games, and he would give them gifts. He would take them out to dinners, and it was all about cultivating these relationships. Mm -hmm. And that it was all about like I'm your friend, and you, you know, like, and you, they wanted to have this sort of weird cronyism, weird mm -hmm. sort of relationship where even if it wasn't illegal, like clearly he was influencing them mm -hmm. to sell more pills. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy. Yeah. 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 It's uh, it's it's crazy, and it's crazy that it's still happening, and I'm. It's just shocking that not more people have gotten in trouble because of it. What has changed in Florida? Because they, they did change and they made a database, yeah, right? Yeah, there's a database right now, which was the biggest thing that didn't. So they, you could go to 10 doctors in one day and get yeah. 150 pills from each doctor. And at the end of the day, you'd have 1,500 pills and no one would know about it. Uh, and then you'd grab those pills and go and sell them to other places of the country where you could get 20, 20 times more for the same drugs. Um, yeah, so the database is, and it's just much harder. I think there's one of the things that I, I remember we, that we reported on it, that you shouldn't be able to prescribe and dispense at the same location because it's a conflict of interest, right? If you have, if you're going to make money out of the sailing, selling of those pills, you shouldn't, it shouldn't be at the same place where you're prescribing them because yeah. then there's an incentive for you to prescribe because you're making money from the sale of those pills. Um, so that was happening in Florida as well, and it's not allowed in a lot of other states. And then the horrible truth is that a lot of those people became addicted, and then they had to get it on the black market. So then they were getting fentanyl-laced heroin, fentanyl -laced heroin yeah. and massive yeah. amount of overdoses. Yeah, the progression was oxycotton, and then it was fentanyl, and then it was heroin, and then it became fentanyl. Oh.